Anthropic just released a huge game changer and in this short video we are going to cover everything you need to know about the model context protocol and how you can get started. It's pretty straightforward, very simple and yet very powerful. So let's dive right into this. This is the blog post or announcement that was published by the Anthropic team. I will start out with uh, reading the blog post to give you a bit of context and then we will dive into the documentation and I will show you how exactly you need uh, what exactly you need to do in order to get started and then we will cover a few examples just to help you grasp how powerful and meaningful this uh, new release is. So let's get started. Today we are open sourcing the model context protocol. Uh, by the way, it is available on GitHub. Um, I will share the link to this blog post and then you can find your way around with the GitHub link and the example, etc. So a new standard for connecting AI assistance to the systems where data lives, including content repositories, business tools and development environment. I will explain this in a moment. As AI assistance gain mainstream adoption, the industry has invested heavily in model capabilities, achieving rapid, rapid advances in reasoning and quality. Yet even the most sophisticated models are constrained by their isolation from data, trapped behind information silos and legacy system. Every new data source requires its own custom implementation, making truly connected systems difficult to scale. MCP addresses this challenge. It provides a universal open standard for connecting AI systems with data sources, replacing fragmented integration with a single protocol. The result is a simpler, more reliable way to give AI systems access to data they need. So basically what does this mean is with this protocol, you will be able to connect your AI, let's say the LLM cloud to your uh, different sources of data. So it can connect to, let's hit this page. It can connect to your file system. So it can connect to your files, to GitHub. You can connect it to your Google Drive, which I will show you at the end of the video. You can connect it to a SQL da database, to Slack, to a knowledge base, which uh, is going to be like the persistent memory system, Puppeteer, which is a browser automation and web scraping tool. You can connect it to Brave, Google Maps, etc. And basically, this is kind of, imagine now when you have an LLM, let's say you have a chatbot or even like an agent and you wanted to connect it to the external world. So you're going to use uh, or API calls or you're going to use Zapier or N810, something similar. Now the, the issue is that all of these um, connectors are different in structure and they take a lot of time to set up and implement. While on the other hand, as long as you don't connect your LLM to all your data sources, your file system, your Google Drive, uh, your GitHub repositories, your LLM works in isolation. So this is why this is so powerful. Now, um, getting started is very easy and straightforward. They have um, this, these instructions. Basically, you need to download the Cloud Desktop app, which I must admit I didn't use so far. I just used uh, the Cloud chat interface via the, the browser, but I don't know why I skipped this, but today I downloaded it. It's uh, very straightforward whether you have a, a Mac operating system or Windows. So after you download it, what I basically did, I just came to Cloud. This is the desktop app, by the way. And what I did, I just took this whole quick start guide. I just copied the whole text because I didn't even want to follow the guide by myself. So I just followed everything and I threw it in to the chat and told it, uh, told the, the Cloud app in this instance, tell me exactly how to get started. So here it is. I understand now with your, you're asking about the model concept protocol that allows Cloud Desktop to interact with local resources. First of all, it told me to check whether or not I have all of these um, prerequisites installed. So I 
checked it and I had everything. And then just gave me the code and straightforward examples of what do I need to do. So first I went to command line, pasted this, I verified that it is correct. And then I, I came to this configuration file, made the adjustments, asked it uh, if it seems right. It told me that it seems right. And then I was good to go. Basically I created an SQLite um, database. I added products to the SQLite database. Then I had to close the cloud desktop app and then reopen it. And then when I did a test, I got this. So basically I asked it, can you connect to my SQLite database and tell me what products are available and their prices. So it went in, into my local computer, it found the database and it shared all the products that I have in my database, which is amazing. I mean, it's simple, but it is amazing because it's something that we couldn't do before. We had to use coding assistance. I heavily used a uh, client for uh, connecting between uh, local stuff to the LLM. Doesn't mean I'm not going to use client anymore, but I just think that uh, this kind of exposes us to new abilities without using AI coding assistance. Let me show you a few more uh, examples just so you grasp the idea. So let's say we want to connect Google Drive to the LLM. So we can just take the MCP server and connect it using these steps, following these steps. And basically from there on, we are just going to communicate with our G Drive, Google Drive via the desktop app. So this is pretty amazing and crazy. And I think uh, platforms like Zapier um, should be somewhat worried about this stuff. I don't know what is the, 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 the plans of Zapier. So uh, I don't want to say differently that they should be worried about. But this is amazing because we can see that Anthropic are um, trending towards making this whole uh, LLM more connective and helping us connect with our own um, database and data sources. I wanted to show you something that I think is meaningful before we kind of conclude this short video. This is the repo. Let me see. There was like this flow chart with I, which I think is important. Let's see, where did it go? Introduction quick start. Okay, so basically, this is just a, a flowchart that I think is meaningful and will help you grasp the idea of what is an MCP. So we have the MCP host, which let's say it's Claude. We have the server, the servers and we have the resources. So a resource can be a remote database. It can be your computer, your database in the computer. This is basically they explain it here. So why not read it instead? So MCP host or program programs like Cloud Desktop, your IDE, Visual Studio Con, for example. The MCP uh, clients or protocol clients that maintain one-on-one -on -one connections with the servers. And the MCP servers are lightweight programs that each expose specific capabilities through the standardized model context protocol. Local resources or your computer resources, database files, services that MCP servers can securely access and remote resources are available over the internet through APIs. So this is kind of like a standardizing API calls in a way between uh, the LLM. In this case, the cloud desktop is going to be like the, the window to all of your other um, data sources. And via while if you connect these data sources to the window, which is the cloud desktop, you will be able to interact with all your data sources. Let's see if there was another flowchart yes so this is another interaction flowchart so basically the flow is what's happening under the hood the flow is a uh, cloud desktop connects to your configured mcp server on the startup there is a protocol handshake when you ask about the data cloud desktop identifies which mcp server can help let's say in this case what is the sqlite um, database which i'm running locally with the product um, cost then it negotiates capabilities through the protocol. So it sees the permissions that I have, and then it requests the data or actions from the MCP server. Uh, obviously, it does take security into account. 
MCP servers only exposes specific uh, controlled capabilities. MCP servers run locally on your machine and the resources they access are not exposed to the internet. And cloud desktop requires user confirmation for sensitive operation. Okay. Now here are a few examples. So let's say uh, we have the, the SQLite installed, the database installed and exposed to the protocol. Let's run this live and see what happens so i have all the product prices over here in the sqlite database that i created and i can interact with it can you analyze the price uh, distribution and suggest any pricing optimizations and then it says i'll analyze the price distribution and provide some insights about potential pricing optimizations so this was the query i need to allow this the tool this was the query. This is the results from the query. And this is the creation of the insights. And now it spits out the output after the analysis is created. So here are my detailed recommendations for pricing optimization. Price segment, the, the distribution. So currently heaviest in budget. It doesn't mind. It doesn't matter to be honest because this is like very specific for the database. And the goal of the video is just to show you the gist of how important MCP is. Um, it opens up a new um, realm of possibilities for us when creating automations and using a uh, cloud in general. Obviously it was just published yesterday. I mean, I don't know when you will watch the video, but at the moment of recording the video, it was just published yesterday. So still a lot of room for exploration and understanding the full potential, but I think this is huge. I'm going to definitely update you guys about any findings or any new uh, developments. I guess that's it for today. Obviously, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, uh, leave a like and your criticism slash feedback in the comment section. And until next time, keep on automating.